another glorious day that God has provided by his grace and mercy, we surely will rejoice and be glad in it. Of course, we are still in our study in the book of Acts. By way of review, we'll be in Acts, as it says in your bulletin, chapter 4, and we'll begin our reading at verse 18. Acts chapter 4, beginning our reading at verse 18. If you're using a pew Bible, that will be on page 945. Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 18. And what we know is that the leaders, the worldly leaders are once again getting upset. Not so much at Christ, though they're mad at him, but, they're at the, but because of the disciples who are teaching and preaching in the name of Christ. And listen, this young man was just healed, and they're asked the question, how did this thing occur? And of course, they're going to say, that by the power of Jesus Christ. And I was thinking about this this week. I wonder if they had said, well, we did it by some magic trick. They probably would not have been so upset. But because they mentioned the name of Jesus Christ, of course they are gone or lost their ever-loving minds. In verse 18 it says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. And, and, and here we go again, as Christ was on the earth, and, and now it's happening with his disciples as well. And guys, in Romans 13, he speaks about, God speaks through Paul about us keeping the laws of the land. That if there's a law that, that's on the books that we ought to keep it. Listen, they, they came up with a law and they're saying you can't teach in that name. But there's a caveat that if what man's law says goes against God's law, then we're to throw man's law out and, and we're to keep God's law. And that's what we see here. He says in verse 18 again, and, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter, verse 19, and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God. He says, judge ye. And, and of course the answer is no. And he's saying, listen, you say it out loud and help it to make sense to yourself. He says in verse 24, we cannot but to speak the things which we have seen and heard. And what he's saying is that, look, we have to tell the truth. We've got to share it as God would have us to do so. He said, goes on in verse 21, so when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because of the people, it says, for all men glorified God for that which was done. In other words, this man was lame from birth and now he's walking, he's praising God, he's going inside of the temple. And listen, folks see that as a miracle and they're praising God for it. And because of that, the, the, the uh, uh, religious rank and file, they don't want to come against or come too, too hard on them, figuring the folk going to get upset. In verse 20, and by the way, not worry about God, not worry about Christ, but they are worried about what might happen if these guys really get upset, maybe a riot would ensue. In verse 22 it says, For the man was about 40 years old, on which this miracle of healing was showed. In other words, he was a grown man. He was blessed of God, and because of that, God is the one to get the glory. Guys, I ask you to be prayerful with me as I preach around our series, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit. And Father, as we continue in this great book, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch and bless and minister to each and every one that's here. And Father, they did not have to come here, but they woke up and you gave them life. And they thank you for that, I'm sure. And even acknowledging it by wanting to come out to be amongst the saints and to come to this service, Father God, to, to praise you even that much more. I pray, Father, as I go through these truths that you'll bless us and minister to us in the midst of them. And Lord, that you'll place them in our hearts and in our lives where they will do the most good. I pray, Father, that you would hide me behind your cross. And, and, and Lord, not uh, uh, allow folk to see what I'm doing, but to see what you're doing through me in regard to your truth. And by the power of your spirit, do we pray with much thanksgiving. Collectively, we say, Amen. And Amen. Verse 23. 
You're with me, please say amen. amen. And, and Dr. Luke writes here, and he says, and being let go, they went to their own company. In other words, they went back to the other believers or, or went, met with them and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which have made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And guys, by the way, they're not being upset because they were coming down on them, but they're praising God in the midst of everything that they encountered. And look, they're not being discouraged. They're, they're being encouraged for what happened. In verse 25, it says, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain things? The king of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against, look what it says, the Lord and against his Christ. And listen, the believers are getting worked up. And, and, and in fact, the, the Spirit's working them up. And, and what they're doing is remembering some, some verses from Psalm 2, verses 1 and 2. And, and they're regurgitating this thing back. And, and they're saying that, look, what he did years ago, or what they did years ago, this prophecy is coming, to, coming true even right now. In verse 27 we read, for, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou has anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. And, and listen, as they count against Jesus they're, they're, while he was here on earth, they're coming against him even though he's in heaven, but they're tormenting or trying to torment his people. Look at verse 28. For to do whatsoever thy hand in thy counsel determined before to be done. And, and listen, what they're saying, what, what he's saying here is that, that though the people are being evil, though they're, they're persecuting or trying to persecute God's people, it was still God's will that this was to occur and will occur, although they are still guilty for what they're doing. He, he's still not going to hold them blameless. They're going to be accountable for what they've done, even though it was God's will, him being God, knowing the past, from the present or from the future and knowing all things and even the hearts of men is saying that yes, they're going to do that, but it's my will that I allow them to do that. But they're still guilty for what they have done and what they will do. In verse 29 he says, and now Lord, behold their threatenings and grant thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. And I love, love that because they pretty much know what's coming down the pipe. And they're saying, Lord, don't let these guys muzzle us because there's a truth that we got from you. It was empowered in our hearts by the Spirit. And we need to boldly continue to pro, uh, uh, proclaim that Jesus is Lord. In verse 30, he said, by stretching forth thy hand to heal... And listen, which the Lord have done through the apostles. He, he's blessed and healed and is still healing. And by the way, healing even today. He goes on in that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And, and he mentions here signs and wonders. And, and wonders actually is the amazement that comes when a, a, a miracle is performed, either whether with Jesus or, or, or these guys, these disciples here, that folks see it and they realize there's no other answer to it except for God. And they're amazed. Don't know where to put it. Don't even know what to do with it. But when you put it in the realm of Christ or God and say it's because of him, it's easier to be understood. And you wonder or amaze that they, they, when, when, when they used to, uh, you go to a magic show, and you see a magician do something, you, you know he's an illusionist. You know he did not really make that elephant disappear. But even then, you're still amazed. But you know there's an answer for what he does, but when God does something, the only answer is God. And you're amazed that he would do what he does, when he does, and even to a people like us, that he will do that. And he mentions wonders, and he also mentions signs, 
And, and that actually points to the power behind what was done in regard to the miracle. Unlike the magician, he has some trickery, but God has no trickery. He simply uses his own power, and guess what? I don't care what it is, whether it's a disease, whether it's some issue, whether something comes down a pipe, whether somebody's bothering you. If God says it must cease and desist, guess what's going to happen? It must cease and desist, and it must leave you alone. And that's the power of God. And hallelujah, we have seen it and will continue to see it throughout this book, the Acts of the Apostles. He goes on in verse 30, he says, oh, reread in verse 30. He says, by the stretching forth of thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, it said the place was shaken when they assembled together. And listen, it was similar to what was going on in chapter 2 when the Spirit first came to Pentecost and it was noise abroad and the wind was coming. This place is shaking. And listen, not shaking because they're shaking. It's shaking because of the power of the Holy Spirit. They're on one accord and they're doing God's will. And yes, it is shaking. And he goes on. He says, assembled together and, and they were all I'm sorry verse 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they had assembled together and they were all filled look what it says with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God it says with boldness and, and listen we saw in verse 29 that, that they were praying don't let them take don't let them muzzle the word and, and listen here they're going to speak the word of God with boldness. And, and listen, for them during that time, it could mean they were killed. And, and by the way, most of them were martyred. But what we know is that when God commanded them to do a thing, they did it boldly. They did not back off. In fact, every time Peter stood to, to say something, to, go to, to teach or to preach, he had no problem telling them, uh, uh, talking about Christ and saying, whom you crucified, no problem. Because what he knows is that his time on earth is going to be on earth until God says his time is over. So he boldly proclaims the power and the name of Jesus the Christ. It says in verse 30 32, and the multitude of them that believed, it says, were of one heart and one soul. And guys, we talk about family. This here is one spiritual family. They're on one accord. In fact, it's God's accord, and he has them there. He goes on, neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. In, in other words, it wasn't no longer yours and mine. Well, don't touch mine, and you can have some of mine, but maybe you can't. It was ours, the family of God. And they laid them there with an open heart and a pure heart because of the filling of the Spirit. It says in, one, in verse 33, and with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. In other words, they gave the gospel, and again, with God's power, and great grace was upon them all. And I think about that, and he said, I said great grace was upon them, and we know that's God's unmerited favor. And listen, at this point in time in the early church, God's favor was on them, and they feared nothing. They feared no man, and they just said, we're going on and on with for Jesus Christ. And wasn't worried about nobody. I, I was thinking about this week. I went to, um, uh, last week, when I was at the, the uh, jail doing our, our class there, and, 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 and sometimes when I'm talking to those guys, in the middle of me talking, all of a sudden they'll just stand and start applauding. And I'm like, well, what, what happened? Did I do a backflip? Or Because it's not like I'm, I'm trying to make a cogent point or anything or, or, or beating on the pulpit. They'll just do it. And, and I know it has to be because of the Lord. And many times I'm not even sure what I said, but it reached all their hearts at the same time and they are on one accord to the point where they just had to acknowledge not so much me, but acknowledge the truth that they just heard. And I wish I could record that, they won't let me. 
So I can go back in my mind to see on, on the tape and see what it is I did say. But listen, it didn't much matter the words that I said. The Spirit took it and interpreted that and touched their hearts and blessed them in a mighty and a special way. There's a guy there, man. He, he's been there since 2013. And generally, them guys don't stay there longer than a year. But he, they kept up postponing his trial and doing this and doing that. And, and he, he, he said to me, he said, uh, Brother Ralph, I, I believe the Lord has me here because he needed to humble me. And he says, you know what? I'm getting ready to get sentenced soon. He said, and, and they wanted to take me out of regular population. He says, and, and, and I went to the Lord. I didn't ask them. He said, I went to the Lord, and, and I said, Lord, I, I don't want to leave, leave this class. And as long as I'm here at this jail in Sharps, I want to keep coming to this class because it's helping me to grow. It's helping me to do what I believe you called me to do, and, and I really don't want to get out of here. And, and so the Lord just opened the door to allow him for as long as he's there, and God only knows how much longer it's going to be when he, after he gets sent to leave. But it's been a blessing to his heart. And God answered his prayer. And, and we've been praying along with him as well. But knowing he's not, and he's a young man too, he's not getting out no time soon. But he says, I'm here. And I'm blessed of God to be here. And I can't wait to wherever he sends me to let them folks know about Jesus Christ. And, and listen, he wants to do it with boldness. And he knows he's not getting out of there no time soon. And he's okay with that. But the Spirit has him in such a place that he believes that that place right now and wherever else he goes is going to be his mission field. Not why he went in there originally. Wasn't his plan. But it is now God's plan for him to minister to those folks. And, and, and guys, it, it blows my mind when, when, when I see something like that, when I see a, a, a young man with a heart like that, he could be in a corner somewhere crying and say, oh, I can't get out. I'm t no, he ain't trying to get out. He's trying to be used right where he is by God. And, and the sense, sense the Lord has called him to preach every week, I give him an assignment. I can't do, do a lot, but I give him an assignment and what to read. I tell him to study. And then when I come back the next week, I ask him different questions about it. So I'm trying to school him as best I can. And it's, it's just opening his eyes to the realities of Jesus Christ and opening my heart to what God can do. No matter where you are, if you're sold out for his cause. Amen. He says in verse 33, And great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of, of the Lord. And said, Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus, and, and great grace was upon them all. And neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the pieces or the prices of the things that were sold. In other words, man, talk about being on one accord. Look, God didn't tell them they had to do this, but it was on their heart that they wanted to do this. In verse 35, it says, They laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And again, no longer mine, no longer yours, but ours. And Joseph, verse 36, who by the apostles were surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And, and listen, he was just one of many that did this and was on his heart to do it. I, I remember years ago, um, now I guess 60s or 70s or whatever, um, the hippies, tried to, to do something like this. They wanted to have communes and, and all of them would live on a commune and we'll grow vegetables and all live together and, and, and be one big, great big family. But the problem with that was that they were doing it under the power of man. And when man is involved or man is at the head, sooner or later it's going to go faulty some kind of way. And of course it did. 
But when I think about that hippie movement, and through that movement came a group of guys that, 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 that the Lord got a hold of, and, and eventually they, they began to call themselves Calvary Chapel. And through them guys, listen, that, that, that church started, and, and listen, I don't know how they're doing as a whole, but what I do know is that some believers came out of that that started a church, a, a local body, and, and was a blessing only because they placed God at the head and not man. And because of that, they were blessed as well. We see in verse 37 of chapter 4, Having sold, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, of, uh, kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought, it says, a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, please understand that whatever you have, whatever you get, whatever you make, it's yours to do with as you please, as the Lord touches your heart. Now, many of the disciples, they were taking everything they had and they were laying it and throwing it in the pot. But you had this couple, Ananias and, and Sapphira, and, and it says that they kept part back or kept back part of what they sold. And look, it's theirs and, and Peter's going to go on and talk about that. And, and so they can do with it as they please. But, but there was a couple of issues. Number one, where everybody else was just saying, let's throw it all in a pot. They were still a wee bit soft and they hadn't grown to that place yet, which is okay. Because God takes us along at, at his place, at his pace. But it, the problem is they kept back some of it, but they said that they threw everything in the pot. And, and look, I don't know how it was expressed to Peter, but some kind of way, I don't know. We, listen, we prayed. God said, give it all. So we gave it all. I don't know how it was, how it was a, a phrase, but somehow they didn't tell Peter a lie. They were lying to God and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He says, and kept back, verse 2, part of, it, of the price, the wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart? It says to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the land or price of the land. And, and listen, they wanted to look good to man, but somehow they thought they would look good to God as well. But we know God sits high and he looks low. And he knows even the intent of our heart. Amen. In verse 4 he says, while it remained, was it not thine own? And he asked him that question. And in reality, it was. He didn't have to sell it. He had to do anything. He could have just kept it. He goes on. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? And again, it was. If he wanted to give half, Peter, look, we give it half. God, we give it half. Been honest, straight up on the whole thing. He says, why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. And, and guys, I got to tell you, when we lie to God, it really is a problem. Then and a problem now. And look, again, he laid it out. Peter laid it out. You didn't have to do anything with it. You didn't have to say anything. You could have just brought something and laid it down and went on about your business. And guys, even though this is the church era, the era of the church, and the era of grace, unlike the old covenant where it was not a whole lot of grace, he's going to deal with these guys in a rough way. And the reason why is because his church is just getting started here. And he needs this thing to be done on the up and up. He needs to at least let it start off right. And we know in the annals of time things happened. But he needed it to start off right and was going to make an example of this couple. And I dare say it, maybe at this point he had a chance to repent. I don't know how his heart was. But obviously God did. 
He says in Ananias, verse 5, hearing these words, look what it says, fell down and gave up the ghost. And, and just in case you don't know, he didn't faint. He died. It says, and great fear came upon all, all came upon all, came on, I'm sorry, all of them that heard these things. And, and listen, God would have it to be that way. He would want this to be sending a message. And what I find, guys, and not just from this example, but from any example, that God is never to be messed with. He's not. And even for us in our time, man, if we're going to do for God or say we're going to do, let's do or say what we, let's do what we say we're going to do. Sometimes we'll say, well, you know, I need to pray more. And that'll go by the wayside. I'm too busy. I need to read more. I need to study more. And, and that'll fall by the wayside uh, 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 for whatever reason. And, and, and guys, even in regard to giving, uh, giving of our, our, our time, our talents, and our giftedness, that's between you and the Lord. Now, a lot of people will ask me in regard to, to the tithe. And, and what I know is that Abraham tithe, even before the law, he gave a tenth to Melchizedek. And even that tithe, guys, if you're going to work off of that, work off of that. If you're going to work off what, what, what the Lord has laid on your heart, be honest with him and do what God is telling you to do. Because what I know is, it, and, and, and from, from my personal experience, look, a tithe is a good place to start. But generally, or many times, look, we'll give even more than that. Depends on how the Lord lays on my heart. And there are times that, 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 listen, there'll be a need, and before I go back to my calculator and my bank account to see if I can afford it, I'll just go ahead and write a check and give it to them, and, and I'm doing that by faith, and it's not something I always do, but there are times when I do that, the Lord will touch me, and by faith, I believe it's going to be okay. And it works out each and every time, always, without me looking to see if I can afford to do it. And I'll just do it. Very seldom do I preach or teach anything about giving here at this ministry. And because of that, the Lord has just touched the hearts of different and various folks. And somehow he keeps this thing going. When I was working, man, and, and, and we are not here, we are different in other places, and, and we're having church services, and, and, and nobody, the folk didn't have nothing to give, but I was working, so we were able to buy Bibles from my salary and stuff like that, so it all worked well. And, and when I came out on disability, the money wasn't as, as fruitful as it once was, but God added, and he worked it out. And for years, look, I, I never took anything out of this ministry, and I'm not bragging on I'm just saying I never had to. And once I wasn't working, things got a little tight sometimes. And you know what the Lord did? He worked it out as well and allowed me to get a little stipend, allowed me to get a little housing allowance. He did that. And, and guys, i got to be honest. From the moment we started that, every time... I cut myself a check, I feel guilty. Because for so many years, it, it, was, it was like we were supporting the ministry. And, and now the ministry is helping to support us. And I feel guilty every time I write a check. Only I'm just built that way. But God just, God said, no, 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 this is what I'm doing for you through the ministry. And I remember the early years, man, when I was trying to keep the books of the ministry and keep all that separate from, from everything else. And, and, and guys, i got to be honest, I, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. All I know is we were a 50C3, 501C3 church that I got that part straight, and, and I would just keep every receipt I've ever had, every dollar or cent that I spent, I would keep track of it. And I put all that stuff together, and the year, I didn't halfway know how to uh, straighten it out. And there's a, a young lady who's a, um, the financial uh, administrator at a couple of churches. She's at a different church now. But somehow we are talking, and she said, Brother Ralph, um, who does your books for your church? I said, well, <laughs> I do. And she said, are you okay with that? I said, no, because I had been actually looking for an accountant. And, and I, I had two, and, and, and they knew nothing about church accounting and, and would make it, actually making it worse. 
And she said, well, you know, my ministry is, I know her husband real well. She said, my ministry actually is working with smaller churches to help them stay current. I said, really? And so she told me to give all the information I had, and it was like boxes and boxes of stuff, going back for, for seven, eight years. And somehow she took it, and we worked together. She was asking me different questions, and, and, and man, she got this ministry straightened out. And, and, and I, I still don't know how she did it, but she did. And, and now every month, she, she gives me the statements. She reconciles our books and our bank accounts, and, and, and I'm amazed. And, and so I said, uh, dear, um, how much are we going to pay you for taking care of these books? And she said, nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing? She said, this is my ministry. I don't take money for this. And she won't let us give her a dime. And the only way I can give her something is I give her a gift card. I know a restaurant she likes to eat at. And, and they'll go and eat. But that's her ministry. And, and man, she's done, I, I, uh, I won't even say a yeoman's job, man. She, she's done with, with a, an accountant, accountant would charge us a million bucks to do, I believe, to straighten all that mess out I had, I had occurred. But she did it. And, and God worked that out. And he still works things out uh, uh, for, for us personally and, and, and for the ministry. He's opening doors that I've never seen open. And, and like the signs and wonders that we see here in the Acts of the Apostles, man, he is blowing my mind. And I keep saying, Lord, don't do it no more. I can't stand no more. And he keeps doing it. And we keep standing it. And it keeps blessing the ministry and opening doors and creating opportunities for us to be blessing to other ministries and missionaries through this little group right here. So what I'm going to ask is not don't give yourself a hand clap, but give God a hand clap. Because God... You, you only know some of it, man, but God has done great things through this ministry. And, and I believe he does it because he's pleased at how we do what we do. And I thank God for that. And you ought to thank God for it as well. Amen. And by the way, if you ever have a need, and I'm not saying that the store is open, but I'm saying, if you ever have a need, I, I mean a show enough need. And, and there are sometimes a folk in this ministry will come to me because they have a real true need. Please let me know. And, and look, it, it could be prayer. It could be monetary. It, it could be physical. Whatever it is, you need to let me know so that we can come alongside and be a blessing to you as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Back to our scheduled sermon. <laughs> We see, let, let's look at the verse 4 of chapter 5. It says, While it remains, was not, thy, was not thine own? And it was. And after it was sold, was it not thine own, in, in thine own power? And it was. Well, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, it says, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. It goes on. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter asked unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And listen, at that point when he asked if she had a, a moment of clarity or the, the spirit touched the heart, and she said, you know what, Peter, no. Not really, we lied. I believe the Lord would have spared her. I do. But she kept on with man's plan, and she said, yea, for so much. And, and listen, he gave her an opening opportunity to repent, but she did not. Verse 9 says, then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. And listen, what he's saying, you're done. 
And look, the only way Peter would have known all of these things, all of these occurrence, is, is because, number one, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and God had blessed him with some understanding uh, to see some things in regard to discernment that they didn't realize that he had seen. Verse 10 says, Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, the verse says, buried her with her husband. And, 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 and listen, she, they wanted to look good in the eyes of men, but they forgot how they looked in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. God's purpose, verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And listen, it was rever reverential fear and, and a friendly reminder that God does not play. Amen? Amen? And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest, verse 13 says, there's no man join himself to them but the people magnified them. In other words, look, everybody heard what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. And they were on the outside looking in. They were unbelievers and probably had an inkling and wanted to join. But man, they probably said, look, I, I, we ain't there yet. We ain't that honest yet. I see what happened with them. Let's hold off on this thing. But they appreciated the ministry that God had done through them. It says again, verse 13, and, and the rest, there's no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers, look what it says, were added to the Lord multitudes, both men and of women. And, and listen, though those looky loos saw it and it looked good and they appreciated them, they weren't ready to go, but the Lord knew who was ready to go and moved them forward to repent of their sins and to believe on Jesus Christ and his finished works. Verse 15 says, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least, it says, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Now, that was the belief during that time, but I see nowhere in Scripture where Peter's shadow healed anybody. I actually had a guy who told me he went into a hospital and he, was, he went to Russia and, and gave out all these Bibles and just got out by the skin of his teeth. But at least that, that's what he told me. And he said, in, I'm, I'm one of those guys, when I go to the hospital, that as I walk past their bed, they're healed. And, and so I said, well, what hospital was this? Well, I'm not going into that. I said, no, let me know. I, 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 look, I need to know where you were going, and, and you got these type of gifts, man. We, we need to take you somewhere else. And, and he wouldn't talk to me anymore after he said that, because he said that, and he knows that it was simply a lie. Amen? Amen. Verse 16, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem bringing sick folk and them it says which were vexed in other words the uh, ungodly spirits were inside of them it says with unclean spirits and they were healed everyone in other words folk were sick and indeed, they were praying for all these people as they were coming in masses. And, and, and listen, if they were, had, had an a, a evil spirit, they were coming out. They couldn't take it with the power of Christ. And, and surely those that were being healed. And, and we see this in the infancy of the church. And, and much of it was to prove that what was being done and what was occurred weren't or wasn't magic. It wasn't soothsaying. It was the power of of God. Amen. And I love the fact even when Christ was on the earth and he would extinguish or exit these spirits out of these folk. And listen, it wasn't just a physical type thing. Even when he physically healed, it wasn't just a physical type thing. It was a, to, to get them to realize the power of God and that they would be spiritually healed because it would be a rough thing for somebody to be healed 
even Lazarus being raised from the dead and not know Christ as Savior and to have to die again after being healed and end up in hell. We'll be a rough thing. Amen? Verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. And, and listen, I'm sure they were. They thought all this stuff was over when they got rid of Jesus, or they thought they got rid of Jesus. And, and in reality, what they did, they made it worse. Because he went to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit, and, and now he's indwelling all these folk, and now they got believers on every side and right in the middle, and they don't know what to do. Yes, they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles, here we go again, and put them in a common prison, in other words, a public jail, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, I love this, and brought them forth and said, and I love it, man, they set them free, verse 20, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And he's talking about all the words of the eternal life that can be found only in Christ Jesus. Now, the magistrates and the leaders think they're still locked up. But the angel came and set them free and gave them marching orders that was contrary to everything they told them to do. And when they heard that, they, they're being obedient. So they entered into the temple early in the morning. And listen, this is again that Holy Ghost boldness we saw in chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 29. He says, and taught, but the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together. They think they're still locked up. He says, and, and all, this, all, all the, and all the senate, senate, I'm sorry, of the uh, children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought and again, they get ready, preparing to hear what they got to say now. In verse 22, it says, But when the officers came and found them not in prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. In other words, the guards are still there. But when we opened, we found no man with him. Verse 24. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted them whereunto this would grow. And then came one and told them, saying, Behold the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching and uh, teaching the people. And, and, and by the way, who do you think name they're teaching the people in? The name of Jesus Christ, whom they said, we don't want you to do. In verse 26, he says, and, and then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people. Of course you did. You ought to have been fearing God. It says, lest they should have been stoned. In other words, a riot could have broke out. They're still missing the point that they were locked up. Your guards are there. They were standing out there. And now these guys are in the temple and they're preaching in the name of Christ. You should have backed off and said, man, we need to leave these guys alone. My mother told me years ago, and she probably was right, a hard head makes other parts of your anatomy real soft. Amen. He says in verse 27, And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in that name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And by the way, it's God's doctrine as well. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Oh, oh wait a minute. It is upon us. He goes on. And then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. And, and it's just that simple. By the way, guys, it's just that simple for us as well. 
And oh, by the way, look at verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew, just in case you forgot, and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And guys, I'm going to stop there because not just repentance of Israel, repentance of these same guys that are trying to persecute them and trying to put them back in prison or do whatever it is they're going to do. He died so that they could be free as well. Man, I said it before, when they came to arrest Christ and they said, are you Jesus? And he said, I am he. And some unseen force threw them back. At that point, I would have realized I'm not on the right side of this thing. But they continued to mess, they messed with Christ. And now they're messing with his disciples and apostles. And, and by the way, guys, I'm going to be messing with you too. And we're on the right side of this thing. And Peter says it well, that we ought to obey God as opposed to obeying the rules and whims of man when man's rules and whims go against our God. Amen? The sermon series, simply put, is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, the same spirit that's working with Peter and his guys is the same spirit that lives inside of our hearts. Let us be obedient to him. Let us do what he has called us to do. Maybe he has not called you to go down to the town square and stand on a soapbox and preach the goodness of Christ. But he has given you a work to do. And you want to fulfill whatever that work may be. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this ministry moment. Father, we thank you for the gathering of these folk and for the blessedness of them being collected collectively in, in this place. And Father God, under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit, and Father, to hear and to, to, to pray and to, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we pray for each and every one of them. And Lord, whatever anybody is going through, we ask, in the name of Jesus, that you will see to their needs and bless as you see fit, Father. We got some that are ailing in their bodies, and we see some of the results of the prayer. We ask that you continue that blessing and minister to them in a mighty and a special way. Father, even for the unspoken, the issues that someone might have that they've not even mentioned to anyone, Lord, that you look into their heart and deal with that as you see fit, Father God. Work it out and give us peace in our hearts and in our minds in regard to what you would have us to do as we pray in Jesus' precious name and for his name's sake. Amen. And amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.